Hello, I'm Mary, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. On this channel, I always feature a book on interior design or gardening, and I'll share how this book has inspired me or just general musings of life. Please join me as we sit down and relax and look at Home at Last, Enduring Design for the New American House, written by Gil Schaefer III. Best-selling author and popular architect Gil Schaefer returns with the final installment of his trilogy on the rewards of living in the American house. Gil Schaefer is a member of the Architectural Digest, AD 100. He is also the recipient of the Arthur Ross Award for Architecture and the author of The Great American House and A Place to Call Home. He is first and foremost an architect, but his knowledge of history, the respect of his profession, and love of beauty also make him a great interior designer. The work of Gil Schaefer is beloved for its elegance, charm, and strong sense of history and place. I have often thought that he is to design what Alfred Hitchcock was to film. They both tell a masterful story through imagery, design, and sheer genius. Since his last book, Schaefer has become a husband and a stepfather, a change that has deepened even more his understanding of how a house must reflect and support the lives of those who live within its walls. This book includes homes he has designed in the mist-covered Hudson Valley, on a bluff above Lake Champlain, on the windswept shores of Block Island, and on the coast of Maine. Schaefer shares the stories of these houses and their owners, exploring the choices made for architecture and interiors, and re-emphasizing his guiding principles that include how to create classical buildings that live modern, how to adapt buildings to different regions and ways of life, the connection to landscape, why fancy can coexist with simple and traditional with modern. Gil Schaefer writes in the introduction, This book completes a two-decade-long journey for me and my firm. One of the most gratifying byproducts of the work over that time has been 
when our clients write to us. Architects typically get letters or emails only when something has gone wrong. And in the trade, we often note that if we don't hear from a client after a project's conclusion, that's probably a good thing. But I have been most fortunate, sometimes many years after the final project is finished, to receive notes, photos, and even videos about the enduring satisfaction that has been derived from my collaborations with families. These notes that we receive are most welcome and provide the impetus to return over and over again to these drafting boards with interest, enthusiasm, and gratitude. I hope you enjoy each page that follows this introduction. Home at Last, Enduring Design for the New American House, written by Gil Schaefer III. This book is 336 pages. It is published by Rizzoli, and it retails for $55. I'd like to quickly remind everyone about a product that I shared with you two weeks ago. It's a handbag by Teddy Blake. The one I purchased was the 12-inch Kate in soft pink with a crocodile embossed leather. I think this is easily my favorite handbag. The quality, the beauty, and the price. With the coupon code TB, the Tartan Topiary 30, you can get an extra $30 off of any purchase from their website. They are having a sale right now, and on top of these sale prices, you'll receive an extra $30 off. I will leave the coupon code in the description below. If for any reason you are disappointed with your bag, their customer-friendly policies make it easy for you to return or exchange your purchase. But I'm sure you will be as happy with your bag as I was. Also, the more you save on your handbag, the more you can put in it. As I looked through the beautiful pages of Gil Schaefer's Home at Last, there were so many wonderful rooms and great designs. But I found myself spending more time than usual studying the laundry rooms. And I think it was because I knew mine was suffering. It's a fine laundry room and has everything I need, but it has been used and abused by the entire family. Today, I'm going to do something about it. 
please don't judge me for what you're about to see. In most homes, we have little nooks and crannies or entire closets and cabinets that we would never want to share with visitors or guests. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. It's like that drawer in the kitchen that holds everything from rubber bands, scissors, to dog and cat treats. My grandmother used to call these areas her little nests, where she would place things in a hurry to get them out of the way, with every intention of putting them in their correct place as soon as possible. I'm going to invite you into two of these areas of my home. My laundry room, which is a catch-all for everyone in my family to place anything and everything. Even Roscoe is repulsed by this. The other spot is the cabinet beneath my sink. No matter how often I tidy these spots, they seem to gradually fill up with stuff. I'm going to clean them today and add some inexpensive storage containers that will organize these items so that they do not grow into a pile of clutter. I did measure the height and the width of the laundry room shelves so that I can choose the right basket to fit the space. Now I just have to pick out the ones I want. I'll start by pulling everything out of the laundry room and placing it into the kitchen so that I can see what I'm working with. Now I'll begin to divide and conquer. And of course, this is when my son comes into the kitchen and wants to make lunch. I do have plenty of cabinet space and drawer storage, so most of these items will have a place in there but the most helpful is labeling the baskets for my light bulbs, ribbon, remnants of fabric, and craft-related items. Through the magic of filming, this seems like it took me just a few minutes, but in reality, it took just under two hours. And it felt so good when I was through. We'll revisit this room in a few weeks and we'll see what it looks like then. It's a small laundry room, but it does have everything I need. Lots of cabinet space, a laundry chute, a sink, and a washer and dryer, as well as some art done by my children when they were in preschool. Now I'll take care of the cabinet underneath my kitchen sink. It's easy to say a place for everything and everything in its place, but it's not as easy to do. I'm saving these milk jugs to use as luminaries. Our neighborhood places them in front of each house on Christmas Eve. And I noticed several of mine needed to be replaced last year. I'm hoping by purchasing just a few storage containers that this will motivate me to keep these items organized, easily accessible, and also encourage me to put them back where they belong after I've finished using them. If this does work, then it is well worth the small investment. We'll also revisit this space in a few weeks just to make sure I've kept it tidy. At this point, my main focus was to wipe down and clean underneath the sink. I also wanted to compile any items that I had duplicates of and discard any expired items. I also wanted to wipe down the containers or bottles so that they would be nice and clean 
without any residue. By placing them in individual trays, not only does this help organize them and keep them tidy, but they're easily accessible as I can pull out each individual tray for a visual inventory. What I've done in the laundry room and beneath the sink is no great accomplishment, but it does make me feel better. And hopefully, I'll be motivated to keep things tidy and organized. This is also a great time to check your fire extinguisher, make sure it's up to date, and make sure you have one in the kitchen. I hope you will join me next week as we look at Living in Color, published by Faden. And I'll also share some exciting news about my daughter's floral company. She has been hired by Lionsgate Productions to provide florals for an upcoming series that will be aired on Stars Network. I'll share a quick behind-the-scenes look and let you know what book this series is being based on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.